excitement level? What's that? Excitement level? Uh, I think we're just ready. You know, we're, we're tired of the, the same old, same old, you know, scrimmaging and drill work and stuff like that. So I think the guys are ready to tee it up against somebody else and see where we stand, where we got to improve, where we got to get better and, and what works, what doesn't work, that type of thing. So, um, you know, it's only so much inner squads can tell you. And, and once the lights come on, then, then things change a little bit and we'll know who's able to rise to the occasion and who we can trust moving forward. Rotation set? Yeah, we're we're pretty well set. Um, you know, with uh, Thomas Burns going on Friday, and then Connor Markle on Saturday, and then Tyler Meyer will be on Sunday, uh, which is uh, brings a smile to my face, knowing everything that kid's been through and, and where he's at, and able to bounce back from from everything. So we're we're excited about him. There there are several other guys that that have earned. Uh, you know, a strong look at that weekend rotation as well. Uh, Adam Barron's, you know, comes to mind as a guy that, that you know, is is really kind of earned a spot there. Um, but based on, you know, Tyler's history with health, I, I felt more comfortable him starting a game than coming out of a bullpen. Um, and looking at the, the health of him, you know, is a paramount deal there. And uh, Ben Jacobs has thrown the ball pretty well as, as well. So, you know, both of those two guys, I think will probably come out of the pen you know, this weekend at some point and, and look for them uh, or maybe to start the midweeks next week. Starting nine preset as well? Uh, there is, um, you know, for it, it, there will be a couple matchup spots, I think, to where things will be floating and, and interchangeable. Um, but, you know, we have we have some guys capable of, of being in there that that, uh, that that part of it's not set right hander versus left hander all the way through the weekend at the moment. Um, you know, I think I got a pretty good idea who we're going to go with tomorrow, uh, but but nothing nothing that's set in stone and nothing that says we can't uh, pinch hit and move some things around depending on how the game goes. So, um, and then following the next next couple of days, we'll see what happens and and who does well and who doesn't. So for the bullpen, is there any kind of plan as to when you'd like to use these guys, or is it kind of just going to be rolling with the punch? Uh, game will dictate it. You know, I think we have an idea on paper, but it never goes that way. Um, you can script it all you want, but once the once things start happening and things speed up, it, it never goes as planned. But um, you know, both of those guys, uh, I would assume, will get in there at some point this weekend. Tyler has obviously been through a lot, just kind of over the course of his last few seasons. What was kind of his reaction when you broke the news to him, and how, how did you kind of take it? Uh, you know, Tyler doesn't show a lot of emotions. He's more of an even keel type guy. Um, but you can tell he, he's he's happy and excited, and really this has just come on the past, you know, three three and a half weeks really, where he's started to throw the ball the way we've all seen Tyler throw it in the past, and I uh, just figured that with his experience and and you know moments not going to get too big for him, and I think uh, this just makes sense to to put him on Sunday with everything he's been through and and the way he's been throwing the ball lately has been great, so uh, just really excited for the young man. It's a pretty cool story for him. It's the first time in a little bit that a true freshman gets the season opening start. Uh, what are your expectations for Thomas early on based on what you've seen from him in your squads and just the, the composure that uh, he's been said to have early? You know, yeah, I think just, just the whole package. And again, I've said it before, I think, um, you know, throwing a, a freshman on Friday night and, and the opener is um, bold, I guess, for lack of a better term. but. Uh, I think he can handle it. I, I do, and I think it's something to build with in the future. It might be, might be rushing him a little bit, but at the end of the day, he can handle it. And he's got the stuff to pitch on Friday night, um, and he's got the the mound presence and the mindset mentality that he, you know, if he does give give up, uh, you know, run or two, he's not going to get overly rattled and, and too excited over it. He, he's just going to keep doing his job, and that's what I like about him. Um, you know, that being said, that's what I've seen in inner squads and and that so far it's a whole different animal when when it's for real tomorrow so i'm what i know about him as a young man i think he'll he'll settle down and be just fine what does it say about this pitching staff that the first guy that takes the mound this season is going to be one of the youngest on the team um you know i think uh goes to show you that that i'm going to go with who i think is the best guy um whether you're a freshman or a senior or anybody in between um, I'm going to roll out with the guys I feel the most confident with. And he's one of those guys that, like I said, I think can handle it. Um, we do have a lot of youth on our staff this year, but we also have some veteran guys that, that can calm the waters behind them. So 
um, you know, hopefully we can we can uh, achieve what we want to achieve with with youth and with with some veteran presence behind them that can put out fires if, if necessary. But I think uh, hopefully the direction of the program we're going is, is you know, we're, we're going to let these these younger kids go out and see what they got. So it's where we're at. Willie, how much does it help to have, have Campy behind the plate to help a young guy like Thomas Burns? I think Campy, Campy's invaluable. You know, when it comes to all that stuff, he, he's a great mind behind the plate. He's a calming presence. Uh, he's another guy that's very even keel, um, and has been around. Understands that he's been in the program now three years. He's been here with me since day one, um, and so he's uh, he's a mainstay back there, and and will settle these guys down if they need it. And um, you know, just just his overall presence is is important. Uh, Coach Steve and I mean, I said to start it short. Um, why did you uh, Steven's been doing a really good job there. Uh, Jax Ryan's been doing a really good job there as well. Uh, both defensively have been been um, you know, doing doing pretty well. Uh, Steven has been a little bit more consistent offensively right now than Jax. I think you know long term projection. I think I think Jax um, you know has has quite a bit of upside offensively. He's just still figuring a few things out. Um, but you know I look for him to to get in the, you know in the lineup throughout the year as well. Um, and you know, right now Stevens Stevens playing great there, so um, that's who we're going to go with tomorrow. Are there any uh, anything set in stone about who you'll pair him with at second? Um, you know, that that's one of those positions we can be flexible with. I think uh, right now Kevin Karstetter will, will get the nod there tomorrow. Um, Ethan Mendoza will find himself playing there, you know, on on occasion. Um, you know, Mario Demera could find himself in the infield, you know, at times and, you know, Jax Ryan could, could end up, you know, finding over there at times as well. Um, but right now we're, we'll go with Kevin. He, he's been, um, you know, an older guy that it kind of seemed to emerge as the front runner there. And, but, you know, there's some, there's some guys nipping at his heels to get in the lineup too. So, um, you know, Ethan, Ethan will find himself in there at times as well. And um, we'll see how things pan out. You had two new guys in the middle infield to start last season too, and kind of two. Well, actually, did do a third. But do you feel like the infield's kind of gelling, or is that going to take a couple of weeks to maybe fully get down? Um, you know, I think uh, you know, we'll see. I, I think you know, we have options, which is good. But um, so nothing's really set in stone. But you know, as of right now, I, we feel that's our best uh, our best infield, and you know, they they've been playing well together. You know, throughout the fall and. Uh, if things have to change, you know, as we move forward, then then we'll change them. But but right now, that's that's what we feel is the best one. Anything you can tell us about uh, Nick uh, progressing in the uh, Nick has been ahead of schedule, uh, which is is um, encouraging for us. He's got his cast off a few days ago. Is already moving moving his hand around pretty good and started strengthening exercises. Um, you know, it, it's it's kind of what a difference a year makes. You know, with with that because. Uh, Last year it was, you know, we didn't know when we were going to get him back and didn't know if we were going to get him back. Uh, this year, he, he the first day he got his cast off, he's out taking fly balls and running and um, asking what else he can do where we actually got to kind of slow him down uh, a little bit, which is, man, that, that like I said, what a difference a year makes. Nick McLean is, is uh, I'm just excited for that kid to, to get back on the field because he's worked extremely hard and, and is, um, you know, has a, a a work ethic that has been instilled. I think that he's excited about, and um, he's ready to play. So I'm I'm um, I'm excited for hopefully him to return optimistically sooner than expected. Um, so progressing quickly, um, but still out for a little bit. Um, who would you say are some guys that will occupy that role at the quarter outfield spots um, for the initial time being, and then specifically opening day? Well, I think uh, you know Kean Vu is is a is a choice out there that has been playing very good defense out there. Offensively, he's been up and down a little bit, but but defensively, he's been pretty good. Uh, Josiah Cromwick um, could could make his way out there, and then you know there's there's the flexibility with Campy too, where we can put Campy in left and move Harris Williams to right, um, and, and catch Newman or you know whoever we wanted to put back there. So. Uh, I think some sort of combination with that um, that we can we can expect to see. It sounds like that situation is more fluid, where you can kind of test out uh, different things while next to one. Yeah, I think um, you know that's that's the little bit of the revolving door. I think um, and that's where we have flexibility to get some guys in the lineup and and keep them sharp and 
again, you know, if Kean goes out there tomorrow and and has a has a great day, then hey, he'll probably go out there the next day, you know. But I think there there are opportunities to get some guys at bats, uh, kind of in that right field spot, um, depending on how things shake out. Is Josiah Crom look among those options? Yep, absolutely. He, he's an option there and behind the plate. Um, you know, veteran bat um, that we're, we're, we're confident with that, that if we have to put him out there, he'll do fine. And uh, based on the matchup, we'll probably find himself out there. As far as the opponent this weekend, Santa Clara obviously had a very good season last year. They went to the tournament. What is what did you hope for when you when you went in preseason and were able to schedule this series? Obviously, San Diego State kind of very similar last year, very, really good team that maybe falls in the mid-major category? Well, we had we had Santa Clara scheduled a couple years ago for, for this weekend. And, um, you know, to, we, had, we had just played them in a midweek um, uh, a couple years ago, and we, we handled them pretty pretty good. Um, and they, they said they wanted to come opening weekend this year. And at that time, I'm, you know, it was kind of like, yeah, you know, we, we, could, we could figure it out. And then they burst onto the scene last year and had a tremendous year. Um, and and went to the regionals and knocked out uh, a couple of pretty good teams in the regionals and um, they got pretty much a lot of those guys returning so uh, that that makes for a much more difficult weekend than the midweek team we saw um, a couple of years ago so kudos to their coaching staff for for uh, developing their program the way they have and you know they're going to be they're going to be tough uh, the kid throwing tomorrow night is a um, very capable arm that. That it, we gotta we gotta come ready to ready to swing it off of him because he's got some pretty good movement on his pitches and good velo. He, he's gonna be tough for us. Good prep, obviously, for a K State team coming in next week. That's probably gonna be ranked. Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're focused on Santa Clara. Um, we can't look ahead. These guys are they can beat us if we don't play well, and we're gonna have to go out and play well to, in order to beat them. So we'll, we'll worry about them and then Kansas State when they come here. You mentioned all the returning talent you bring back. One of them now plays for you and Eamon Lance. Is there any sort of scouting report that he's kind of giving you about the kids? Uh, you know, Lance is a very intelligent player, um, smart kid. And, and um, you know, there, there's some obviously some things that he's told us about a few of their guys and what their arms, what kind of repertoire they have. But um, end of the day, we still got to go out and execute. I mean, there's there's videos for that, too, that everybody has access to. So it's not it's not telling us anything that we haven't already confirmed ourselves. But, um, you know, there's we just got to go out and execute at the end of the day. What role do you expect to uh, Eamon, he'll be a, you know, a DH uh, pinch hitter type, I think, you know, early on here and with the, the capability of playing first, if, if something, you know, God forbid, happened to Toby or whatever, we had to move some things around. He, he's, he's serviceable at first base, um, but, you know, nice right-handed bat off the bench that, that um, hopefully will win us some games with that, with that bat off, off the bench. Outside of uh, Nick's injury, everyone relatively healthy entering the opening weekend? Yeah, for the most part, you know, we got typical bumps and bruises here and there, but uh, for the most part, most guys are healthy um, and hopefully we keep it that way. Uh, Brandon Compton, you didn't bring him up in terms of corner outfield uh, potential. Uh, if you could DH, what, what, what do you see as, in terms of his role early on? Well, Compton, he's in that mix of, of you know left field and, and DH, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if we end up finding his name in the lineup tomorrow. Um, uh, but he's definitely a guy that has uh, a lot of pop and, and can can add some uh, depth to the power of our lineup for sure. And, you know, I, I don't have any problem putting him in the corner outfield. He does just fine out there. So if that ends up being a being an option, you know, we, we can look at that right now. It's it's probably more of a DH type role um, and, and let him let him swing the stick. So uh, sure. we'll see how that works out. In terms of your two way guys, Compton and Carlone, is it still Compton's there? progress as offense and Carlos Moore's a pitcher? Yeah, I think as of right now, that's how that looks. Um, you know, Cole, Cole can swing the bat a little bit. Um, I still think he's got some things to clean up. And on the flip side, uh, Brandon, Brandon's got a great arm, um, but he has to, to lock in a little bit on the consistency over the plate. So, uh, you know, we're not going to rush him out there with that. Still coming off Tommy John last year. and. Um, you know, Bennett Fryman is another two-way guy that, that uh, has swung the bat and is starting to, to find a little bit of a rhythm on the mound as well. So uh, not afraid of the two-way guys. Brandon Barnes, do you see him getting any action this weekend or potentially thinking of maybe saving him? 
for midweek? Uh, Barnsley should uh, well, he'll be a nice, you know, another nice option out of the pen if we need it. A um, you know, nice left-handed option that I think has been spinning the breaking ball pretty well. And, and um, you know, when he attacks the zone, he's, he's got good enough stuff to, to get a lot of guys out. So uh, he's, he's another option that we have. No set starter for the midweek yet? Uh, no, we'll see how the weekend goes and, and uh, go with our best option at that time. But um, you know, like I said, we'll worry about this weekend first and, and the midweek when we get there.